Welcome. In this video, we will discuss who is actually the cause of our suffering. And we will learn on the basis of ancient Vedic literature, who is the real cause, why, and how we can counteract the suffering, the only real way which destroys suffering. So if you want to learn this, please stay with me. We will start with a text from the ancient yoga textbook, which is called Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, I will read just some portions of it, and then I will give some explanation. So this is Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 17, Text 18. Translation goes like this. O greatest among human beings, it is very difficult to ascertain the particular miscreant who has caused our suffering because we are bewildered by all the different opinions of theoretical philosophers. So now I will uh, read a portion of the commentary and then I will explain more. Although the bull, the personality of religion, and the cow, the personality of the earth, knew perfectly well that the personality of Kali was the direct cause of their suffering. Still, as devotees of the Lord, they knew well also that without the sanction of the Lord, no one could inflict trouble upon them. According to the Padma Purana, our present trouble is due to the fructifying of seedling sins. But even though seedling sins also gradually fade away by execution of pure devotional service. Thus, even if the devotees see the mischief mongers, they do not accuse them for the sufferings inflicted. They take it for granted that the mischief monger is made to act by some indirect cause and therefore they tolerate the sufferings, thinking them to be God given in small doses for otherwise the sufferings should have been greater. So I will stop here. And I will explain a little bit what does this actually mean. First, I uh, just need to give the background story because here in this text, um, you could hear I was uh, reading about the bull and the cow. But the bull and the cow are not just ordinary bull and the cow. They are actually uh, very special personalities. The bull is the personality who represents the dharma dharma or the religion and the earth is the personality who represents this planet earth so in this story which is described in the first canto of shrimad bhagavatam it happened so that uh, the dharma the bull met uh, bumi the cow and uh, they were both in very, very suffering conditions. Uh, Bumi the cow was uh, looking very sickly, very um, exhausted and um, almost without life and uh, very unhealthy complexion. So Dharma the bull uh, was asking her what has happened to her? Is she sick or what is she suffering from? And then, of course, the um, state of the bull was even worse. He was actually a very beautiful white bull. But what happened to him was that three of his legs were cut off. And so he was standing just on one leg. 
And actually, even this leg was being uh, beaten, attacked by a Kali. And who is Kali, you may ask? Kali is, again, uh, a very extraordinary personality. He is the personification of the uh, <clears throat> of all the arguments and all the evil of this age in which we live right now, or Kali, Kali Yuga, the age of Kali. And Kali was actually, he presented himself like a king. He was dressed in a dress of a king, but he was behaving uh, very cruelly. So he was like um, uh, attacking the bull. So when the bull was requested, who, who has caused you this pain? Who has caused you this suffering? The bull did not say Kali has caused me, but he very philosophically, he answered, oh, this is very difficult to ascertain. This is not such a, uh, an easy answer to give. So this is the background story uh, to our to our topic today. So from this we can see that um, it is actually not so easy to understand who is really the cause of our suffering. So the personality of Kali was the perpetrator. He was directly attacking the bull. So uh, the bull, he could say, oh, it was Kali, but he did not say. And actually, uh, people who are really learned in the spiritual circles, who really have spiritual knowledge, uh, they will never accuse a perpetrator to be the cause of their suffering. And so you may ask, why not? Why not? I mean, we, we, sometimes we can see this person hit me, this person caused my pain. So why can I not say that this person has caused my suffering? Because uh, things are much more complicated. And to explain this, I will uh, explain to you the cycle of suffering, which is actually explained. It is explained in this commentary that I read. This is in the Padma Purana. Padma Purana is also a Vedic uh, literature, and uh, it describes in great detail uh, how actually our suffering comes about and what is e uh, actually really the real cause of our suffering. So I would like to explain this to you. So in this Padma Purana, it is actually explained that in the beginning, there is, um, so our suffering actually uh, appears in four different stages. You can call it stages. And uh, the first stage is called Aprarabdha, Aprarabdha karma, Aprarabdha. In Aprarabdha means this is the stage of the karma or the reaction to uh, sinful activity or inappropriate activity in which the suffering is not yet manifest. It's unmanifested reaction. It, it, you cannot see it. Then in the next stage, it uh, starts, uh, it actually becomes, it lies, yeah. It, it, the next stage is that it lies for some time dormant. And in this stage, it is called kutam. And uh, this is actually, uh, that phase is practically experienced like uh, some kind of um, tendency within our subconscious mind. Yeah, some kind of tendency. And then the next stage, of the, uh, the reaction is bijam, and bijam means seed. 
uh, the, that reaction of a previous activity has taken the form of a seed. And this is a similar way. Here I can actually give that example. Like um, if we want to have a tree and we want to enjoy the fruits of the tree, like for example, mangoes. Now it's a mango season. And um, so we will, now first we will, we will sow the seed. And this seed will fructify and then uh, sprout and then the, the tree will grow and it will take a while until it develops and then it will blossom and then the seed, then it will actually produce a fruit. So then we can enjoy that fruit. In the same way, uh, that action that we uh, performed in the past, which was uh, sinful action, which was um, inappropriate action, which caused bad karma. So that action also produces result, which can be compared to a fruit, but it, we do not get to taste this reaction, this fruit immediately. So it takes a while, it, it takes, it goes through different stages, which I am just now explaining, right? First it's completely unmanifest, then it just lies dormant for some time and then develops into seeds, which is bijam. And then the next uh, phase is these seeds begin to fructify, which is called falon mukam in the Sanskrit. And then the next stage is prarabdha karma. And prarabdha karma is when this um, uh, karma is fully ripe, like the fruit is produced. And this is the stage in which we are experiencing suffering. So if we are aware of this scientific knowledge that is presented in the Padma Purana, then we need to accept that it is not really the perpetrator, the person who is just standing in front of us, who has just like the instrument of our bad karma. He is not really the cause of our suffering, the cause of our suffering, it's us. We have caused, we are the cause or our improper action is the cause. But now you may ask, well, but I don't remember this. I don't know anything about this. And how come I have done this? I, I basically, I don't want to do anything um, you know, anything bad. So the ultimate reason why we do act in ways that are producing suffering is ignorance or avidya. Avidya, it's a, a Sanskrit word. And avidya basically means just ignorance of all these scientific facts of how the, the, the karma is produced, how this suffering is develop me, developing, and how at the end we have to accept it. And once the karma is fructified, we have to take this fruit. We have to taste this fruit. There is no way we could escape. There is no material way we can escape our karma. Like many times you can hear people are trying many different things, you know, to uh, get relief from their suffering. Um, some who have some understanding, some spiritual understanding, they try to do some penance, some austerity, give some donations. And in this way, uh, pay out their way <laughs> out of suffering. But actually, Maybe it can reduce a little bit, just a tiny little bit, but it does not really remove the suffering. There is only one way that the suffering can be completely eradicated 
for good. And this is through the practice of bhakti yoga. Pure practice of bhakti yoga. And thus bhakti yoga is the prime necessity of human life. Every human being needs to understand about what bhakti yoga is and how important bhakti yoga is for himself and for everyone else. Because when you practice bhakti yoga, then all these different stages of suffering, all these seeds which are in different stages are being fried, uh, which basically means they are being rendered uh, important. They cannot produce fruit any longer. And this is a wonderful, wonderful news for everyone. So therefore, we should be interested in learning about what bhakti yoga is and how we can practice it. And I will speak more about this in my following classes. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, you can subscribe to hear more about uh, these interesting topics. And you can also watch some more videos.